Leo. Oh, Leo. Level Earth Observer, as he styles himself. Low Earth Orbit, as I call him, because that's what Leo actually stands for. I've come to realize I like doing Leo videos, because he does the one thing that most Flat Earthers just completely ignore. He goes after space travel. He isn't good at it, because of course he isn't. But I respect it because I've always said that space travel is the first and foremost hurdle that Flat Earthers need to overcome before they even begin to babble on about the horizon. So what happens when a self-important knob who personifies the Dunning-Kruger effect tries to debunk the existence of the most complicated and notoriously difficult task known to man? Well, hilarity ensues, of course. So Leo has some thoughts about the deorbit of space stations bringing them down into the atmosphere to be ripped apart by aerodynamic forces at the end of their lives, the remains being deposited into the ocean. Specifically, Leo is going to speculate about the eventual deorbit of the International Space Station, and he's going to talk about the deorbit of the Mir, the Russian space station that operated from 1986 until 2001. Everyone ready? Let's do this thing. You gotta laugh. NASA plans on crashing the International Space Station into the sea. <laughs> We already know where your spacewalks are underwater anyway. Oh, that's cute, Leo. The argument that ISS EVA footage is filmed in the neutral buoyancy lab is one that's easily debunked. First, everyone knows that the more water you're looking through, the less you're able to see. All objects eventually fade into the distance. This is the reason that this photo of an iceberg was impossible to take in a singular photograph and is instead several composites stitched together. With that said, the far ends of the International Space Station should be at least a little blurry in EVA footage, but they're not. Furthermore, a second point easily proves spacewalks are not performed underwater. Have a look at these two photos. Do you see the difference? Water makes your head look small. It's just how light works. The mockery from these people is off the charts. Let me just quick read. NASA plans to take the International Space Station out of orbit in January 2031 by crashing it into the spacecraft cemetery. The space agency has targeted the most remote point of the ocean to crash land the space station when its time finally comes. After that, NASA plans to buy time for its astronauts on commercial space stations. And of course, we've looked at this private sector, if you like, SpaceX and Blue Origin, and we've seen they're funded by the American government anyway. So of course, we know all of this is a charade. There's Leo's favorite word. Should we have a counter? No, they are not entirely funded by the US government, but they are contracted by the US government. Leo is a crane operator. I'm willing to bet the construction company he works for takes contracts for its local government. Therefore, Leo's job is a charade. But it got me thinking and... and... Uh-oh. Careful, Leo. Don't want to blow a fuse. Got me going back in time looking at the mirror and bits and pieces like that. It's kind of led me in a certain direction. But let me just show you where this Point Nemo, this graveyard is. Down here, supposedly. We've got the mirror where that supposedly crashed and burnt up in 2001. I say supposedly. I don't doubt something was in the sky, but I can assure you it wasn't a giant space station deorbiting a scientifically impossible ball. Oh boy, that was a lot of words for not a lot of substance. Long walk for a short drink of water, as they say. So you can argue that that isn't what it is all you'd like, Leo, but here's the problem. Not only is there plenty of footage of the mirror in action throughout its life, much like every other object put into space, the mirror was washed by people on the ground. Here's a couple of images of Mir in orbit taken by telescopes in people's backyards. The first shows Mir on her own, and in the second, she is docked with NASA Space Shuttle Atlantis. This would have been during the Shuttle Mir program, a collaborative 11-mission project that operated from 1993 to 1998. And then of course we've got the ISS, but the point Nemo is right down here. Of course, out the way, really. I mean, maybe convenient enough to get some footage from sort of South America there that will be similar to the mirrors that we've seen. But like I say, this kind of has sent me off back in time, strangely enough, looking at the mirror. Now we're going to look at the mirror coming in, supposedly deorbiting. 
But when I look at the footage, I, I see something else. I don't see a space station deorbiting a scientifically impossible ball, obviously. I see something else. But let's have a look at the footage. I love how he set that up. Let's rephrase it. I don't see a thing that I don't believe can possibly exist. I see something else. Well, no shit, Leo. But wait until you guys hear what he thinks it is. It's too funny. I almost want to spoil it, but I won't. I want you to take note. You've got four, what appears to be four missiles, I'm going to say it, two each side, and one in the middle which appears bigger. <laughs> Missiles. Man, I can't. Anyway, yeah, four smaller objects and one larger object in the center. Gee, Leo, I wonder how that could have happened. Almost like it's a cross-shaped space station or something. So you've got two what looks like missiles, one side, this side closest to us, a bigger one in the middle, and two the other side. Let's just come back. Yeah, five, okay? Two, four the same. And one different. Looks like one of them might have burnt up now. Let's just come back once more just to confirm it was five. Burnt up, eh? Yeah, that's a common thing for missiles to do, burn up into non-existence. They're not designed to withstand extreme speeds or anything. Weird how he just brushed past that, huh? Yep, yeah, definitely five. Two, four, the same, and one in the middle, a bit different, a bit bigger. So we've got five debris, supposed debris pieces, but what I think that is, is missiles from the MiG-31. Bear with me. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Missiles from a MiG-31. Okay, Leo, I'm going to give you a little rope here. I can't wait to see how you're going to hang yourself with it. Now the MiG-31 is a high altitude interceptor aircraft that's been around since the 70s. I think it's been in service since the early 80s. I just want to go down to specifications here. Where are we? So I want service ceiling height, which should be here. Service ceiling height, so 82,000 feet. So this bad boy can actually fly to the same heights or possibly a little bit higher than the U-2 spy plane. The only difference is the U-2 spy plane, of course, is a spy plane. This is an attack or interceptor aircraft where it can go air to air or air to ground, as we're about to see as we look at its armaments. When we look at the armaments, we're only interested in air to surface. And when we go to the air-to-surface missile capabilities of this high-altitude plane that flies at 82,000 feet. Boy, he sure does make it exciting, doesn't he? But just a quick question. Why are we only interested in air-to-surface? Since these missiles, in Leo's mind, were used as a display without an actual target to hit, why couldn't they be air-to-air -air missiles? Just a thought. That came into surface before the mere crashed down. And of course, when we looked at the footage of the Mir, the so-called space debris, we had four bits the same and one different bit of debris. And then I look at the air-to-surface missile configuration. You've got the capability of four of the same. In this case, they're quoting anti-radiation missiles. And one hypersonic air-launched ballistic missile. Four plus one equals five. Four the same and one different. And that's exactly what we saw in the mere so-called deorbit footage. Five bits of debris, four the same, one different. So I think this bad boy was responsible for what we think, or what is cited as the mere space station deorbiting, I think was five missiles fired from this aircraft at high altitude, conveniently caught on film by someone. Man, Flat Earthers really need to figure out what conveniently means. There's nothing convenient about an astronomer or space enthusiast filming the planned deorbit of a space station that they knew was coming down, and when, and where it was coming down. Anyway, there's a couple of problems with that theory. First, your childish reliance on 4 plus 1 equals 5 is so simplistic and stupid that it should really only work on other children. 
So let's do the research that Leo didn't bother to do. The first missile, of which the MiG-31 is capable of having four equipped, are KH-58U SHKE missiles, Soviet anti-radiation missiles with a range of around 120 kilometers, designed to hone in on enemy radio emissions. When fired, it travels at a speed of roughly Mach 3.6, or about 4,400 kilometers an hour. Meanwhile, the other hardpoint is reserved for the KH-47M2 Kinzhal or Dagger missile, which is a nuclear-capable hypersonic aeroballistic missile. Hypersonic means it goes really, really fast. How fast? Well, compare the KH-58 speed of Mach 3.6 to the Kinzhal speed of Mach 10 to 12, or 12 to 14,000 kilometers an hour. Furthermore, the Kinzhal didn't enter service until 2017, six years after the Mir came down. So not only does it travel much faster than the missiles that in the video are keeping pace with it, but it didn't even exist at the time. Well, that was short. I am in no way satisfied by this. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. But wait, there's more. Let's pull up another Leo video, shall we? This one's about the shuttle days, and specifically STS-41B, the fourth flight of Shuttle Challenger, and the first use of the manned maneuvering unit which allowed for untethered spacewalks. Let's see what Leo has to say about it. Today we're going to go swimming with some jetpack men. And to do that, we need to go back in time. We're going back to the 80s, a different time, a different place. So let's have a look. Just going to let NASA give you a little rundown here regarding the jetpack or the MMU as it was known. And I'll come back. Powered by 24 nitrogen jet thrusters, the MMU is a self-propelled backpack that gets an astronaut and his tools quickly and efficiently from one place to another. On the simulator at Martin Marietta's Denver Space Center, the astronauts mastered the MMU in less than 18 hours. To fly, an astronaut uses hand controls mounted on his armrests. The left hand determines speed and direction, while the right hand determines attitude or in pilot's terms, pitch, yaw, and roll. Right, now we come to this scene, which is footage from the Space Shuttle's cargo bay during the historical so-called first EVA wearing these jetpacks. I want you to listen to, we've got the two astronauts here, Bob Stewart and Bruce McCandless. Bob is talking to Bruce here, and I want you to listen what Bob says, very telly as we're about to see in a minute okay it's old school footage so it's not the best quality and of course they do that for a reason because they're hiding a lie and of course we know most of this old stuff is underwater wait 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 the footage is grainy because it's old and to hide the flaws in what leo thinks are special effects what yeah they intentionally made video technology shitty at first because conspiracy makes total sense Anyway, I do appreciate Leo letting NASA explain the MMU, since he likely couldn't do it. How much do you want to bet Leo thought attitude meant mood? But listen to the conversation here between the two so-called astronauts, very telling. Remember, they're supposedly in the space shuttle above the Earth, orbiting the Earth, okay? Now listen to the conversation. Like you're on that simulator up there in Denver. Hey, I can see stars out here. That looks real smooth, Bruce. Just like you're on that simulator up there in Denver. And of course, Bruce comes in very quickly. Oh, I can see stars. In other words, shut up, Bob, for fuck's sake. Wow, really reaching there, Leo. The reason they compared it to the simulator is simple. The entire point of this EVA was to test the MMU and how it controls. Bob is essentially saying, it looks like the simulator accurately portrayed how to control the MMU because you're using it just like the simulator, Bruce. Bruce's sudden remark about the stars is just how those guys talked. The early shuttle missions still had a lot of the space cowboy spirit to it, with a number of the astronauts being veterans of the Apollo program. They got excited about the things they were doing. Bruce's exclamation about the stars has the exact same tone as this. Now I tell you, I can't see to the bottom of it, and I'm as close to the edge as I'm going to get. <laughs> That's the truth. You do that in West Texas and you get a rattlesnake. Here you get permanently shattered soil. How about rolling that one over? No way. Look at the size of that rock! 
The idea that Bruce was somehow hushing Bob is absurd because, get this Leo, this wasn't live. This was pre-recorded footage during the mission. If they were faking it, they could edit that part out, or do a new take and make sure not to say that. This is not rocket science. Oh wait. Because Denver, if you're in a spaceship above the Earth, orbiting, cannot be up there, can it? It's below you. You've got to be kidding me, Leo. You've been told, like every flat earther, that directions are relative. Things are not above, they are above you and your present location. So if the shuttle was, say, oriented with its cargo bay pointed toward the Earth, the Earth would be above you. It's that simple. And fun fact, bay toward Earth was the most common orientation for an orbiting shuttle, because it kept the bright, unfiltered sun off the sensitive components as much as possible, and kept the shuttle's communications antennas pointed at receivers on the ground. So no wonder Bruce quickly went on about the stars, which again drops you guys in it, because there's so many contradictions regarding can you see the stars, can you not? No, there are no contradictions at all. You can see the stars when they're not being washed out by the sun, or by that bright shiny rock we call the Earth. In fact, considering the orientation of the shuttle at the time, it sounds like Bruce was surprised that he could see them where he was. So, as usual, Leo has failed on all accounts. He's ambitious, trying to debunk the existence of space travel, but he's so laughably bad at it that it makes his cockiness incredibly infuriating. What a dumbass. That's it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed, and hopefully, it won't be over a month for another video. If you enjoy this content, consider hitting the subscribe button. If you really enjoy this content, consider donating on Patreon, becoming a member, buying some of my books on Amazon, or buying some of my merch. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys.